Hey YouTube, it's the long awaited Islander Class B RV interior video. Some of you have been asking me for about four months now, four or five months to do this video in the comment section. And some of you have been very persistent and I've been wanting to do this video, but I've been busy with classes and being a teaching assistant out at the university. Um, so now that I'm basically done exams, I just have exams to mark. I'm here down in Point Roberts visiting my relatives, which were kind enough to let me stay here down on the beach. We had a fire going last night, that was fun. And um, so without further ado, let's get into the video of the interior. So here we have the cabin and we have the cab of the truck. Now, uh, what I did when I designed this was at night, I wanted to have this blackout curtain here so no one would be able to see me when I have my lights on from the outside. So if you look inside, it kind of just looks like a white wall. And uh, I purchased this material from uh, Value Village. It's a uh, dual layer thermal. And uh, I think it came from a yacht because it was a really long piece and I had my friend's mom cut it down for me. Shout out to her again. Thank you so much. It's working really well for me. Um, I just got the 12 volt TV installed here right now it's not working that great because I have just a really cheap aluminum foil antenna that I built there but uh, sometimes it's working pretty well hey seems to be working better there now so uh, yeah let's show you around the van so this is the shower back here and uh, I got a toilet there too a bathroom sink I don't use that too often here's the shower head up there and uh, i really like it's a really big bath for a van this size you would never be getting a bathroom this size there's a vent up there too i wish they made them standard size vent this is a very tiny small vent i don't know if you can see in the video here but uh it's hard to find replacement parts for it so in the future if that becomes a problem you know i'm gonna be having to source pretty hard or just entirely replace it here, this is what I like about the 1991 Supreme, is the shower uh, has a closet, and the later ones have a closet, but they're made out of wood. This closet door has wood on the other side, but on the outside, it has fiberglass, which makes a lot of sense for a shower. The contents aren't going to be getting wet. So here, I have some of my clothes here. I'm only here for the weekend, so uh, well, I have some clothes for the week too, but, but uh, not too much. Most of it's at home. And uh, let's get on to the kitchen facilities. So uh, here we go. This is, uh, I got some of my dishes here. In a real van life video here. You got dishes that I haven't done yet. I have, um, I got a double basin sink, which is nice. You can keep your dishes in one and use the other while you, while you need it. And uh, I also got a four burner stove and an oven, which really comes in handy. Um, I think I'll be using the oven a lot more when I'm actually full-timing in it. Right now I'm only about four or five days a week in it now, uh, and I'm really enjoying that on the campus. Oh man, it's beautiful being you know, a 10 minute walk from your classes. Right here I have the microwave. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. It's hooked up to the inverter, but it draws so much power that uh, I can't really use that unless I did an alternator mod where I could get more output from my alternator. So I'm, I might just remove it, I might keep it, I'm not sure yet. But um, it would be handy to have in some occasions, but I try to minimize the amount I use the microwave. Here's the fridge here. It's not a huge fridge, but it's not small for a van this size. It's a lot bigger, a lot more space than you get in those small Dometic uh, 12 volt ones at least. It's a three-way fridge. Three-way fridges are really convenient. Here we got the freezer there. Got a lot of ice formation up there too. I need to defrost. <laughs> And uh, not too much food in here right now, just uh, mostly juice, some kimchi too. That's really nice. A lot of the times, uh, one of my spots where I park at night, there's a Korean grocery store there that's open pretty late, so I go in there and uh, get some of my meals there. So here's the cupboards up top. It's kind of nice, it's kind of like this fake stained glass kind of look. You can see through the cupboards. I really like that. I've got my uh, solar controllers here. They're not even fastened down properly because I was working on them the other day, but um, they're pretty rinky dink. I would replace these with better solar controllers and 
uh, in the future, and I'm probably going to do a video on the best solar controllers that you can buy and what to look for them, um, because uh, I haven't found very good information on YouTube about that. Uh, I know there's a lot of solar videos, but in terms of uh, ones that are going to give you the exact values you want for your specific batteries, uh, I haven't found too many videos on that. So for lighting, we've got uh, just, I replaced these LED lights in there, got a LED in there too, but I also got an incandescent LED there, but I have that out right now for some reason, I don't remember why. But here is the real beauty of the Islander. Is that TV too loud right now? Do I need to turn it down? Here, just turn it down a little bit here for you. Ooh, oh, poor fish. I hope he eats that one. All right, so uh, here's the bed up here. Um, it goes pretty far back. I don't think if you can really see in this video. Maybe if I, I could climb up there right now, actually. Yeah, let's do that. So. Whoa. Here I'm up top, just kind of laying in the bed. And, uh, you know, it's not huge, but it's not small for an upper top bed. You don't even have to add the extra pieces to it like the other ones. I've seen in vans, you have to install a board here that sticks it further out. And I, I was looking and you could actually, you know, it depends on how these parts are glued or uh, screwed into the wall properly and if they're strong enough, but you could probably actually extend this bed out even further if you wanted to. So, because when I lay in it, it works really well for me, but I lay this way and I'm about 5'9", but if anyone was taller than that they would have trouble laying full fully spread out this way across the bed but they could go with their head down there and extend it out so that's that's a, a possibility here's the uh, escape hatch here whoa so bright and uh, we got some people walking on the beach over there God, sometimes you just forget where you are when you're in these vans here and uh, there's the solar, there's the flexible solar panel that I installed. Uh, it's working pretty well for me. I'd recommend them from um, AliExpress, very cheap. I did have to pay like a little bit of taxes on it when it got here um, from uh, going through customs, but that's okay. And here's the um, fan vent that I installed. I think I showed you this on the exterior video. That uh, allows me to have my lights on at night and not have anything come out the the um, any light come out the fan cover because uh, I park around, around a lot of skyscrapers and stuff in Vancouver and, and condos and all that and uh, from above they can see down if there's a light although the solar panels are kind of a dead giveaway all right so yeah we got some more light in here now because I opened that up and uh, yeah this is kind of what it looks like in the van I can go all the way back here and show you got lots of space here this camera doesn't have the widest angle for this, but it seems to be doing pretty well for this video. There's my aluminum foil sketchy antenna. That's actually a cool tip, is uh, if you get one of these 12 volt TVs, and uh, and it's got a TV tuner, so you can get HDTV channels for free, uh, what you want to do to just test it before you buy an antenna, is you can just use uh, some tin foil and a coaxial cable that you use for cable, just cut the end and put the um, aluminum foil on it. And I get five channels here with that. My um, my relatives here, see that big antenna up there? They're doing that and they're getting seven channels. So, so uh, for DIY, it works pretty well. So yeah, I'm getting down here and uh, we got some hooks here. Uh, I usually keep my jackets right there. Right here, I put this holder here for the backup camera so I can slip it underneath and put it here when I want sometimes if I want to be able to look what's happening behind the van typically like I don't think I've done that I've done that maybe once just to test it but it would be useful possibly I've seen people that install cameras on this side here so they can see who's at their door or who's knocking I haven't had anyone knock so I haven't really found it important here's the dinette so the dinette it's uh, cushions there there's storage underneath under here is I think it's a 20 gallon water tank and under here is um, the inverter converter and that was a really nice uh, feature that came with this van was uh, an inverter converter so it can um, convert so it does uh, 
110 volt from the wall and charges your batteries at 50 amps or what else it can do is um, it can uh, invert from your battery 12 volt to 110 volt AC which is really uh, useful and the thing that I like about this I mean anyone can get an inverter but the special one about this one that came with the van is uh, it has a really low power saving mode so when there's no load on it even when I have uh, my iPhone charger here plugged in it's not powerful enough to trip it out of power saving mode when uh, there's nothing connected to it so if, if you're in a house this would be using power right now even though there's nothing connected to it but this one right now isn't drawing any power because the inverter hasn't kicked on yet but once I connect my phone to it uh, it'll start producing power which is really cool it saves saves energy and it's really useful in a van because those inverters they're idle draw if it doesn't have a power saving mode you're gonna have to turn it on and off on and off on and off all the time and how much of a pain would that be when it's under your seat here and you got to take everything apart but I do want to show you the inverter converter so I guess I'll take everything apart right now so here we go just get rid of my wrap here so take that cushion out and take that cushion out see there's seat belts too underneath I've got seating in the back here for four and up front for two so I got seating for six this was a safe um, hideaway safe I haven't checked whether it's big enough for my laptop but it seems like it might be I was gonna s check that first before I installed it because if you can't fit a laptop there's no real reason to have a safe unless you need to store a cash somewhere and uh, or your passport I guess and here's the inverter converter. This guy is an old model. It's the UX1112. I think it's made by uh, Xantrex, if I remember correctly. Trace, Trace Engineering. But I think they might've gotten bought out by Xantrex. I'm not sure, but here you can see this guy right now. It's clicking in the um, standby mode. So it's searching right now for, um, for uh, something drawing more than five watts. And you can adjust right there. You can adjust it so it can go down. You can set your threshold. So you can set it at 10 watts for when it kicks on, which is really, really handy when you're full timing. And uh, so yeah, that's the inverter converter. And you know, this is from 97. I can't believe it's still running. It's got a big fat transformer in there. You can hear buzzing sometime kind of quietly. And uh, I don't think they make the new ones uh, the same way. But uh, for this to last this long from 97 is really impressive. And it looks like it's not gonna give out anytime soon. Knock on wood. So yeah, those, you know, the, th the thing is there, you can get inverters for really, really cheap, but inverter converters today cost quite a bit of money, significantly more. So for some people cost-wise, it makes more sense to do uh, an inverter that you flick on and off. But really, in the end, you'll really appreciate having something with standby mode, at least. And then uh, sometimes people will buy a separate converter, too. So um, down here is my battery. Uh, I'll give do a video on that later. It's a lithium iron phosphate 110 volt, 110 amp hour battery uh, that I built from cells that I bought online that were discounted. And it originally came with this North Star battery here. It's, uh, it was about 90 amp hour AGM. It has a lot of cranking apps. I'm actually considering, it's a marine style battery, so I'm actually thinking about considering uh, installing it as my uh, starting battery, because my starting battery is kind of weak right now. So this dinette here converts into a bed. What happens is you pull these two legs out here. There's two of them there. Uh, and you can throw the legs somewhere. You put, put the table down to these slots there and then uh, then you can push the cushions across uh, and there's memory foam you can throw down on top of there too and if you want to make the bed wider you can uh, pull these out like that that's pretty handy the way they designed today eh? and uh, it makes the bed even wider although you gotta have cushions and everything for that larger size which isn't very convenient so you generally keep it that size um, I prefer the bed up top because I find that when I park along uh, the sidewalks, most of the time they're slanted sideways like that. And uh, when that happens, 
when you're sleeping here and they're slanted so they, they can drain into the storm drain, you're kind of, you know, rolling out of your bed. Whereas up here, you're, you know, uh, it's a lot more convenient sleeping position and you're not going to feel like you're falling out of bed. I really, I really do like this upper bed, but you, it does take some getting used to, I guess. I kind of like camping and stuff and tree houses and stuff like this. So this is a fun space for me. Not a whole lot of Islanders, especially, uh, well, not a whole lot of Islanders come with that upper bed up top and the shower in the back and the oven. So uh, one thing I really like about the Islanders is they really make use of uh, storage space, right? So, I mean, I got all my junk here, fire extinguisher and um, some plastic bags there, but they really make sh make use of the space. There's all this space in here to store stuff and it goes down really deep. Like, down here I can stick my hand all the way down there here's what I'm using for heating it's a buddy heater a lot of people have reservations about the buddy heater but it's been working really really well for me this is a big buddy heater and um, it's hooked up via this cord here to um, where the original heater for this van was and the original heaters in all these RVs Maybe uh, not the modern ones, but the, you know, anything older than 90s, maybe 2005. They got these really inefficient heaters. Here, I'll show you. Here's the heater here. And, uh, well, this is the exhaust for it. But they're really inefficient. They use tons of battery power. You'll drain your batteries down every night. And uh, they use lots of propane, too. They're about 14,000 BTU or so and they lose about 30% of that to efficiency. So these guys are 99% efficient. They do put out moisture, which is, um, I haven't found it too bad, especially where I've been living, where it's moderate, moderate climate. If you were in a colder climate, I could see it causing condensation issues and being a problem. But I, it's really efficient and it runs on a 20 pound, don't quote me on these numbers, but on a 20 pound propane tank on low, it runs for 240 hours. And this van has a 30 pound tank which, uh, you know, I can run this thing for a long time. I usually crank it up to full, and then I turn it down once things have heated up in here. Before bed, I'll uh, crank it up to full, get everything hot, get the bed warm, and then climb up in there. And I'm warm for the night in the Vancouver area, for sure. Here's all my storage. Came with a bunch of crap in here. Not organized at all. Got some extra tools. You, know, you gotta have lots of tools when you're living in a van you do you got to have a multimeter you got to have a soldering pen you got to have some spare solder especially if you want to be doing the repairs yourself if you're going to a deep uh, an rv dealership and having them repair everything for you it's going to cost a fortune here's the water heater the only reservation i have about the water heater and it's a very minor gripe i mean i shouldn't even be complaining i love this fan but um the water heater is a uh, manual pilot so you gotta go outside and turn it on with the lighter whenever you want to turn it on. Some of the newer ones they have an auto sparker and uh, you know that does help with stealth but one thing that it is helpful in the winter is when it does get a little cold in Vancouver and it gets below freezing for a while you can put this on just pilot mode, have it run on pilot and it just keeps the water above freezing and you're not using too much gas. So it is handy in there. I've got some storage and stuff on the outside. I don't find it all that useful. It's very small storage space. Maybe in the newer ones they made it a bit bigger. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to show you here in this van. Got some lighting here. I put um, LEDs in there. I try to convert everything to LED except uh, this guy back here because it's a big fluorescent tube and you're in the washroom so infrequently you don't really need to swap it. It's hard to swap the fluorescent ones. Here's the fantastic fan here. And it's full of fantastic crud. I haven't been able to figure out why um, I've got uh, dirt and debris coming down into it, even though I got the vent cover up there. But uh, it's really easy to clean. You just undo these screws here, pull it out, and it's on a thermostat. So when you're in the summer, it'll try to regulate the temperature in here. And uh, yeah, one thing that's nice is it came with all these power plugs here. For 110 volt that are all wired up to the inverter converter and uh, and when you plug something in you get power 
Here's the 12 volt TV here. Don't make glyco curry. If uh, you need a quick meal, that stuff is awesome. So here is the uh, power plug for the TV. See, it's a 12 volt plugged into this dirty ass 12 volt socket that I've yet to clean. And um, yeah, there it is there. The picture quality is really good. I've, they uh, stopped producing this TV. It's the RCA 19, RCA RT 1971 AC TV. And um, I don't know why they call it AC because it runs on DC, but it also run on AC too, but it uses, I just hooked it up to my kilowatt meter here. Oh, lighting's kind of bad, but it tells you the power consumption and it uses 15.6 watts running, which is great when you're going off 12 volts, you're not having inverter losses. And it uses uh, 0.1 watts in standby when the TV's off, so you don't have to worry about draining your batteries at all. And again, I'll, I'll do a video on uh, the advantages of lithium iron phosphate batteries and why I think that's one of the best chemistries you can have. Um, just got a, a mat down here, you know, keeping your shoe prints um, and dirt off of your shoes out of the tiles. I put this floor down, didn't do the best job, but uh, you know, I put this whole floor down for about 13 bucks. So, uh, you know, at some point I'll probably tear it up, but it seems to be uh, faring pretty well so far. And uh, yeah, here's my uh, meter here. Tells you what's going on with your batteries. You can check your LPG, your propane. Right now I'm full because I filled it up before I came down here. And uh, I mean, the black tank, it's always gonna be inaccurate because you get crud on the sensors. You gotta get external sensors to make that work well. But um, yeah, you can check your battery too, but that's pretty much useless. You wanna have a, a voltage readout like this one here that tells you the actual voltage of your batteries at that moment because this isn't telling you anything. Anyways, yeah, I store some food up here. I like what they did with the Islander. They make these little cubbies up here. I drew some wiring from this light here and I put a phone charger up top there, which is handy. And uh, yeah, this curtain here, when I feel like it, I can take it down. It's got snaps along the side. I don't know if you can see that there. It's kind of unsnapped already right now. The uh, border guard kind of roughed it up. Anyways, you can uh, pull all these snaps off, undo the curtain, and then flip it up top onto the bed. And then you can climb through to the cab. This front seat here. God, that's beautiful. This front seat here, uh, it swivels. Both of them swivel actually all the way around, but this one has something blocking it, so it can't really turn more than sideways. But this one swivels 360 degrees, and you can put the it all the way down, perfectly flat. And so you can have a little temporary bed with this thing if you have a third friend here. Um, I mean, you can fit two people up top if they're cozy or they're a couple. You can have one person down at the bottom, and you can have one person here. So you can fit a lot for a Class B. And I'll just, here's the console here. Nothing too special, you know, it, it folds out into a table, which is kind of nice when you're uh, back here. Oh, I've got some crap there blocking it from folding out all the way, but you get the picture. And uh, here's the stereo I put in, pretty crap stereo, I got it for 20 bucks, but it works really well and it has Bluetooth. Back here, I store my broom and my jumper cables, I store my um, tire covers and a vacuum as well. So I think that pretty much concludes our tour. I, I can't think of anything else to show you right now, but uh, I think that was a pretty thorough video, quite a long video. So I hope that uh, pleases the subscribers and the commenters on the videos. Um, I know you've been waiting for this for a while, so uh, here's your reward. And uh, thanks, uh, YouTube has changed their subscriber policy that you need to have a thousand subscribers to monetize their videos so if you could leave a subscription and a like on this video that would really help um, because I'm trying to get up to a thousand so uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, I hope you enjoyed this van as much as I am right now so wishing you all health and happiness and uh, have a good one